If you've ever been impressed with the amazing telephone tricks that you see in movies, then this is the list for you. This is my top 10 list of telephone tricks that you see in movies. And we'll start with a movie that nobody on earth has ever seen before. It's called Ghost in the Machine. A kid tells a stranger that he has a winning lottery ticket and asks him to buy it from him for half of its value. The man agrees and calls a lottery phone number to make sure it's really a winning ticket. Hello? State lotto. Hi, is it true that you can't collect on a winning lotto ticket if you're a minor? Which the kid has somehow diverted to his friend who's using a voice changer and pretending to be with the lottery so that the kid can scam 50 bucks from this guy. Uh, yes, yes, sir, that's, that's right. right. You've won $100. You can come down to 2211 West... This movie even has several more telephone tricks, like where the ghost of a serial killer tracks the kid's mom's cell phone and switches traffic lights in her path to try and kill her. (laughs) Number nine is from the movie War Games, when David Lightman's on the run from the military and he needs to make a phone call but doesn't have any money with him. So he takes the mouthpiece off the payphone, finds a soda tab on the ground, and uses it to complete a circuit, which gives him a dial tone. This trick actually used to work, but it doesn't anymore because you can no longer find soda tabs or phone booths. Number eight is from Mean Girls, where Regina isn't happy about seeing Jason with Taylor Waddell. Can you believe it? And he's with Taylor Waddell. I heard they're going out. So she calls up Taylor's mother to impersonate Planned Parenthood. The only reason I'm calling this a telephone trick is because Regina is cool enough to know that caller ID won't be passed along if she connects through information. Waddell on South Boulevard? Caller ID. Not when you connect them information. Hello? Hello. May I please speak to Taylor Waddell? She's not home yet. Who's calling? Oh, this is Susan from Planned Parenthood. I have her test results. If you could have her give me a call as soon as she can. It's urgent. Thank you. She's not going out with anyone. (laughs) Okay. That was so (laughs) fetch. Stop trying to make fetch happen, Gretchen, because it's not going to happen. In the movie The Core, the government hires a hyperactive computer genius because they need him to hack the planet. You want me to hack the planet? For no reason at all, he grabs a guy's cell phone, folds a gum wrapper into a magical hacker-like shape, and uses it to whistle into the cell phone. Which, of course, gives the cell phone free long distance forever. You've got free long distance on that phone. Forever. Speaking of hacking the planet, number six is from the movie Hackers. Phantom Freak needs to make a call from a payphone that for some reason is sitting on his table. When the automated voice asks him for five bucks, he plays a recording of random touch tones, and his call magically goes through. Please deposit five dollars for the first minute. Thank you. No, no, no. Thank you. And then for some reason, he immediately hangs up the phone, which makes about as much sense as the rest of that movie. Since this list hasn't had nearly enough free phone calls from payphones in it, number five will be the scene from Terminator 2, where John Connor asks the Terminator for a quarter, and the Terminator responds appropriately. You got a quarter. Obviously, this movie stole this trick from Police Academy 3, where Sergeant Tackleberry helps a little old lady retrieve her quarter from a payphone by shooting it with a gun. Can you identify your quarter, ma'am? In Ferris Bueller's Day Off, a restaurant owner doesn't believe that Ferris is really the sausage king of Chicago. You're Abe Froman. That's right. I'm Abe Froman, the sausage king of Chicago. So Ferris picks up the restaurant phones and pretends to call the police, but he's actually calling the restaurant's other phone line. When the restaurant guy finds another phone and picks up the line, it's Ferris's girlfriend wanting to speak with the sausage king and helping to confirm Ferris's fake identity. Could you describe him for me, please? Leather jacket? White t-shirt, sweater vest? After this call, the restaurant guy gets sneaky and picks up the Sausage King's extension to eavesdrop, only to hear him speaking with the Chicago Police Department, which is actually Ferris's friend Cameron. Mr. Froman, this is Sergeant Peterson, Chicago Police. Luckily, all adults in John Hughes movies are really, really stupid, so the plan works perfectly. Thank you. Don't mention it. Number three, in the movie Electric Dreams, a computer has come to life and fallen in love with its owner's girlfriend and spends half of the movie harassing Miles Harding by screwing with his credit cards, locking him in his house, calling the police on him, and other bizarre stunts of harassment. 
In the end, the computer gets depressed and decides to kill himself by using the telephone to send 40,000 volts around the world until it reaches him. I'm really not capable of self-destruct. What did you do? I called long distance. I sent 40,000 volts around the world. Should be in Tokyo by now. On my phone? Don't be upset. I dialed toll-free. When the phone rings, the suicide plan works flawlessly. You little... Number two, in Pump Up the Volume, Christian Slater runs a secret pirate radio station where he harasses his guidance counselor over the phone. Now, my listeners are, are curious about your participation in the decision to expel Cheryl Biggs. Who is this? How, how did you get this number? When the guidance counselor finally has the phone call traced and we think the police are coming to arrest him. It's all over, son. This phone call has been traced. We find out that the pirate radio guy has been using the phone line of his neighbors by hiding a cordless phone base in their shed. The phone line coming into the shed here. There's the transmitter, which means the receiver could be in any house within a thousand yards of here. And finally, my pick for the best telephone trick in a movie comes from Short Circuit 2, when the characters Ben and Fred are trapped in a meat cooler, which has a phone line in it for some reason. So Ben uses his Radio Shack calculator and some juicy fruit gum to make a bunch of phone calls to his girlfriend's answering machine. But since he can't talk, he plays songs to her using the calculator's touch tones. Because all calculators have touch tones, right? Yeah. So of course the girlfriend hears the message and immediately knows that Ben is in trouble and that the songs are clues. So her and a cab driver work together to track him down. Well, we have come to Broadway. Is it a left or a right that I would hang? And of course it works. So I made this list not just to show you guys a bunch of old, cool movies, but also so you can tell me which movies I should have put in here. So I want you to leave a comment and tell me which movies have bizarre scenes featuring telephone tricks that I forgot to put on this list. Because I definitely haven't seen enough weird telephone movies and I need to see more of them. Many, many more of them. We found your keys. If you want them, better come and get them.